Hello and welcome to another Worldwide Camera Exchange video. Today I'm going to talk about Hasselblad A12 backs. Now any Hasselblad user will be very familiar with the A12 back. It's the standard film back giving 12 6x6 exposures um, per 120 film. Now they were first introduced in the early 1970s. They replaced something called the 12 on back. Now the 12 on back was an earlier non-automatic back that was introduced with the 500C camera in 1957. This is an A12 back. Obviously this is the black version, they were also made in chrome. The A, the 12 on version looks very very similar but if you look here on the 12 on back you can pull down this, this flap and there's a tunnel that allows you to look through to the back of the backing paper on the film. Now with the early 12 on back, you had to load the film, put the insert into the back, pull the flap down, look through to the backing paper, and then advance the film to the first frame, and then stick it on the camera and away you go. The A12 back was the automated, the automatic back. So with, with the A12 version, all you need to do is to load the film, line up to line up the film to the little arrow here stick the insert back in the back stick it on the camera and use the camera wind crank to advance to frame one so i'm not going to talk about the 12 on back other than to say don't bother they may be cheap but they're a lot of hassle i'd always go for the a12 version now the a12 version gives 12 6 by 6 exposures on a 120 film. You might have heard of the A24. That gives 24 exposures on a 220 film, also 6x6. There's also an A16 and an A16V. The A16 gives 6x4.5 exposures. The A16V gives 6x4.5 exposures, but in a, in a, in a vertical format. The vast majority of photographers will, will, will use A12 backs, which is why I'm just going to focus on the A12 backs. So fundamentally, there have been three versions. Um, this is the, the Mark I version, which is, was available throughout the 1970s and early 1980s. It, uh, the easiest way to tell it's the Mark I is the, the little v, v for Victor V here, um, and the, the, um, the very classic looking um, film reminder that you can just, you can just pop the end of the, the film carbon in there. This is the most common version by far. Good, reliable backs. Um, they do need servicing though. If, if, if you pick up one of these second hand, it's gonna be 50 years old. If it's never been serviced, it's gonna need a service. It's gonna need the light, the light baffling replaced also. Um, so if you're looking at if you're looking at these, do, do do make sure it's been it's been serviced first, or if you're buying it, do factor in the cost of a service. In the 19 what would it be now? It'd be mid 1980s, uh, uh, mid to late 1980s. The newer version, the Mark II, was introduced. This is the Mark II version. It's got a slightly more updated um, film reminder on the back. With this one, though, the end of the carbon just slides in there, and it's got a 12 on the top there. Now, if you can afford to pay the extra, this is probably the version to go for. It's quite a bit, it's quite a bit younger, and generally, because they're younger, they are more reliable. But even with these, I would say, check to see if it's been serviced. Moving on, 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 on further, in the mid to late 1990s, they introduced the Mark III version. Now, this is the Mark III version. Lots of people don't like it because it's got this big, ugly plastic thing on the back. This is the dark slide holder. So when you take the dark slide out with this version, you can then slide it into store it, which is, a, which, which is actually a good feature. This will be the most expensive version because it is newer and because it is the later version. In, this, in, in the case of this, the Mark III, no longer has the, the 12 on the top there. It has just A12 6x6 on the, um, just to the right of the, of, the, uh, of the back release button, just there. So Mark I has the V with, with the more traditional uh, ASA dial and memo holder. Mark II has the black 
the black memo holder with the 12 on the uh, on the top. The later version, this is actually the latest version before they were discontinued, has the big ugly uh, dark slide holder on the back and the A12 6x6 logo just there. Okay, so you found one you like, you want to check it over to make sure it's it, it's working well. What, what, what do you check? Now, personally, I would check with a film, but before I do that, I would run through a few preliminary checks, and if it passes the, the preliminary checks, I'll then put a film through it as well. First of all, just, just, just have a look over the general, the general cosmetic condition. Um, this is very, very much common sense stuff. Make sure there are no dings on the, on the corners here, no dings on the corners here, and make sure there are no, no nasty signs of wear here. The black ones do wear very, very easily because the black paint does chip away. The chrome ones tend to hide, hide use more, but still, if you, if you have a look where it's been clipped onto the camera here, if you have a look at, around the, the point it's been clipped onto the camera here, you'll, you'll soon see whether it's had a lot, lot of use. I would avoid heavily used backs. A few marks, not an issue at all. I mean, they are they are designed to be used professionally. They are designed to be used quite you know, quite heavily. So check out the um, check out the cosmetics. If you're happy it hasn't it hasn't had a hard life, then the next thing I would do would just be to take out the dark slide. Now just have a look around here. If the light baffling inside is beginning to deteriorate. The first place it'll show is where the dark slide pushes in and pulls out. The dark slide starts to push, where it pushes through the light baffling, it starts to push the light baffling through and it becomes visible, particularly down here. It's on these backs, it's a rope, and that rope begins to, to do two disintegrates and it begins to push through. So if you see any, any rope or cord at any point around there, then the, the, the light baffling will need to be replaced. Um, next thing I would do would be just to take to take the, the insert out. Now just check that the number, the last three digit digits here match the, the last three digits, where is it, the last three digits here. When these leave the factory, the insert is matched with the back. Now, if they're not matched, it's not the end of the world, but I would most definitely put a test through and film through to make sure that the frame spacing is, is consistent. Um, it's not the end of the world, but I wouldn't expect to pay as much where the backs aren't matched. If a dealer is asking top dollar, he shouldn't be asking top dollar for, a, for, a, for an unmatched back. You'd always get a discount. Um, with the insert removed, again, just, 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 just look at the amount of wear on the inside here. Look at the amount of wear across here and all around here where it's been inserted into the back and taken out of the back if they've had a lot of use again you'll, you'll spot it quite easily there and if they've had a lot of use best avoided but this one is actually very very clean remarkably remarkably clean for a back that dates back 40 odd years um, but again at, the, at these points here at these points here and down here you'll, you'll see if they've be, if they've been used a lot again just just make sure there are no dings no dents just make sure the thing hasn't been hasn't been dropped um, it's also a good idea just to stick it onto, onto a camera. Just take a, take, a few, take a few a few pictures. Take it off the camera and just check the, um, the frame counter. When it comes off, that will say three, four, five, whatever. Just open it up and make sure that springs back to zero. If it doesn't spring back to zero, that's a sign that the mechanism is getting very sleepy and it really needs to be, needs to be serviced. So, just run through those quick checks. A lot of it is just common sense. Make sure it matches. Make sure the frame counter works. What I would then do is, is put a film through the back. Um, take your time, make sure you load it properly. Make sure you use it outside because the with a the film, there are two things to really check. First of all, check the frames aren't overlapping. You won't know that till you get the film back. But you're also checking to make sure the back is, is light tight. Now these are early 1970s backs. It's quite common to have light leaks. The, the, this Mark II version, which is a bit younger, you'll come across them occasionally, but a lot less because they are fundamentally all very well built. Uh, this later, the later Mark III version with the dark slide holder, you're unlikely to have light leaks, but I'd still check it just in case. Even these are 20 odd years old. Um, 
So load a film, take it outside, try to take it outside in the sunshine and just, 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 just run a film through. Leave it in the sun as much as you can. So if it is leaking, leaking light, you, de you definitely will see, you will see um, flare on the film when it comes back. So take it out, take a few test films, um, take a few test exposures rather, run the film through, through the camera, make sure it loads, make, make, make sure it winds on once you've finished. When you're back indoors again, Take the film out, make sure obviously it has, has run through. I've come across a case once where the film just didn't run through, but that was quite unusual. Make, make, make sure it's run through and send it off to get developed. When it comes back, do check the spacing between the exposures. They're never bang on, but you should have 12 exposures and they should, they should, be, they should be evenly spaced. If there's a little, a little bit of a little bit of, of irregularity between the frames, that's not so much of an issue. But you don't want the frames touching. You definitely don't want the frames actually overlapping. If you see that, then you most definitely need to get the back serviced. Also, once it comes back, just very carefully check all the negatives to make sure there's no there's no um, there's no fogging. If you see fogging, it'll come right across the it'll come right across the. Um, from the edge of the film, you'll see it like flare across the film, like flaring across the um, the film. It really, it really is quite obvious. But as I said, test it in bright sunshine to make sure that um, if like light, light is going to get in, it's, it's going to get in properly. Um, there's no point in testing it indoors because you're much less likely to spot the uh, to spot the light leaks. So if you've uh, if you've done that, you've checked it over cosmetically, you've checked over the few me mechanical checks that I've outlined, and you've checked it with a film. If you're happy to proceed, then you'll have a good, reliable back. Um, don't forget that they do need to be serviced every three, four, maybe five years. Um, definitely get them serviced because one thing that does have to be replaced regularly is the light baffling because that is it's rubber based and in time it disintegrates. So no matter how well you look after it, you will need to get that done. And that's just a standard thing to be done during a service. So I hope you found that useful. Um, if you have, please like and subscribe. If you have any comments, please please stick them in the comments box below. I'm, I'm always happy to get feedback. I'm always happy to hear other people's experiences, particularly with the long-term reliability on this stuff. Um, so I hope that's, uh, that's useful um, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.